In my last update, I talked about the monthly and the weekly charts and how we're just underneath these trend lines of resistance in the monthly and weekly charts. Here's the NASDAQ. We're just right under this trend line. Here on the NASDAQ monthly chart, this goes back all the way into the 80s. It's long-term channel. I talked about this. I want to show you some things as we approach these resistance levels, the things that I'm looking at. Here's the S&P monthly chart. As I talked about my last update, again, we're just underneath this trend line here. I think that we're going to... Uh, tag these trend lines in the monthly time frame. We're just right underneath them with the S&P and the NASDAQ long-term uh, channels. We can reach those levels next week, as I've said. Talked about these uh, channels, a recent price action, not the long-term trend line on the S&P. That upper boundary is nearly 100 years old, uh, back from 1929. But the channel here from the pandemic low in 2020, and uh, again here on NASDAQ, nice channel. We're just directly below it here and for me, this divergence, just directly underneath it. And again, uh, just directly underneath the monthly trend line uh, as well. So again, reach these levels, these trend lines, going into next week at some point, NASDAQ and the S&P 500. And we may even overthrow it a little bit uh, here in the weekly time frame. This upper boundary includes a shadow. If we exclude the shadow, we're already at it, but it's just slightly higher. I about this at great length in my last update. I talked about the divergences on the S&P 500, and I talked about how we overthrew this trend line right here that I was watching. And that uh, for me to watch the other trend line parallel to this low right here and this low parallel boundary it would just be from this peak here to uh, just directly overhead from where we're at, which would be uh, the target level on the 6,000 area. So I talked about all this in my last update. I think these divergences will play out once they are complete. But as I continue to say, I'm watching that that upper channel line in the monthly time frame. The uh, was 5750 to six, just over 6,000. Now there, we tagged 6,000 on Friday. We Close just under it at uh, 59.95. Probably uh, retest that level, that trend line at some point next week, surrounding the inflation data. For it or with it, watching. Considering all of this, I'm going to show you some things that I'm paying attention to. This is the uh, Fear Greed Index in blue. This is the S&P 500 in red. They're diverging now. Again, the divergence may not be done yet. Uh, here we've extremes reached at 75 and we're coming back up and we're making a lower high as the S&P pushes and makes a higher high. Uh, we had a divergence uh, at the July peak. S&P uh, peaked here and we had your greed index make a, a lower high. This was over a couple months here, a little bit shorter, very similar to what we have right now, where we had a peak the beginning of March and went and made a higher high at the end of March, very end of March. And again, the fear greed index made a lower high. So it did mark, and these were the, the two peaks of the year in March and July, 2024. Back and look at other divergences, uh, tops and bottoms. But again, one is developing here. Maybe it's not done yet. It could still be under construction, but we are directly under that long-term trend line. The monthly time frame on the S&P, if we tag it next week or shortly thereafter, reverse off of it could complete this divergence and again very similar to what we had in the March at the March high here we had a peak on the S&P in, in mid-October we've gone a little bit higher here in November uh, but the fear greed index is not if we turn off the trend line in the monthly time frame we could start seeing those divergences in the weekly time frame begin to play out and possibly complete the divergence here but like I said this could still be under construction we have not reached the target level yet we have not reached that trend line we're still under it chance we can reach it next week we came within a striking distance of it a push on an intraday basis above 6,000 will probably close above 6,000 or at least test it again we reach that trend line in the monthly time frame but this is something worth watching because fear greed is diverging with the S&P 500 that's what usually happens as a top forms sometimes diverge at bottoms as well other times tops and bottoms are just formed by reaching extremes but here you can see earlier in the year uh, we did have uh, we did have these divergences uh, with the tops that developed in 2024 the other thing to note is that we are reaching the 75 we reached 75 right here almost uh, we reached 75 twice and formed really 
uh, Class B diversions with the S&P 500, two equal peaks on, on the Fear Greed Index, the S&P uh, went a little bit higher and then it diverged and, and we had uh, a sell-off over the last two and a half, three years or so when we've seen the Fear Greed Index reach the 75 level, just beyond it, form a diversion that has led uh, to a bigger sell-off. Just something worth paying attention to here on the Fear Greed Index diverging currently with the S&P. And again, let me be clear, it may not be done yet. We still haven't reached my target level. We're just below those levels, but we could reach them soon as next week. We could reach those trend lines monthly time frame on the S&P and NASDAQ. We're just directly below them. Please support the channel with the link directly below that allows me to be able to provide you this information. If you like the chart, you like the indicators, please let me know that by supporting the channel. I don't have any sponsors, just a direct relationship with you. So I just ask that you do what you can to help out. I just put it all out there, but I do need your help in order to make it work. If you could take a moment to help out, I would really, really appreciate it. I thank you for your consideration for that. At the end of this video, I'll link the video I did earlier this week, important stuff. 60 minute charts, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts. The upper window, I have the S&P 500. The S&P is going higher. The S&P trend direction is diverging with the S&P 500. It's making a lower series of lower highs. The rally comes to a conclusion that this will drop into negative territory and stay there likely throughout the duration of the next bear market during a good portion of it. When we peaked in 2022, uh, we diverged as well with the S&P trend and it eventually it eventually moved into negative territory and remained there until the sell-off was over and formed a uh, divergence with the S&P 500. Here we got a higher low. The S&P 500 moved to a lower low in late 2022 and diverged and bottom formed. So again, uh, this looks very similar to the 2022 top. And again, we start going negative, uh, which are selling off. We start seeing this go negative, uh, then that's going to be confirmation. Fleeting of a divergence will likely mark the turning point, but confirmation will really be when it goes into the negative region and then remains there. But the S&P 500 trend direction, this defines the trend. Now this is the S&P volatility oscillator and this showing volatility is very low. And again, we're forming the diversions with indicators in the weekly time frame. We're forming the diversions with the uh, trend direction, the S&P trend direction right here. Any indicators are forming that. Now here, when we topped over in 2022, we began to turn. Uh, it was validated, it was validated with the trend direction moving into negative territory and remaining there. And then we got above the little line right here, this little blue line right here. Trend direction moved negative. We had topped. It marked a reversal. And, and we saw volatility get above the signal line, showing that the S&P volatility was now starting to rise. Right there. Do you see that? They ha it happened simultaneously. We started getting above the line an increase in volatility and we saw the trend change at that point going into the negative region do you see this the s p dropped so this is going to tell me exactly when we have a confirmed reversal it's not going to mark the exact turning point although the diversions could it did over here but when we start seeing volatility rise and remaining there okay had corrections where it's gotten above it, but then dropped back below it, gotten above it, dropped back below it. That's marked, uh, you know, major sell-offs, but we got to get above it and stay above it. And if we do, we can usher in a major reversal or bear market. Again, we're diverging just like we were over here, trend direction. And again, it's kind of drifting sideways here. Now, very similar, very similar to what we had over here. So again, is what uh, what I need to see if we do go up to the monthly trend line. And like I said, I still think we're going up to that monthly trend line for a test. I've been talking about it for months. Target range was 57.50, the low end of the target, the lower trend line, the upper trend line on the monthly chart was uh, just uh, over 6,000 now into the month of November. Uh, and again, if we tag it and start a reversal, I'm gonna be watching 
do we eventually start seeing a sell-off that pushes the trend direction into negative territory, completing the diversions, much like what we had over here? And then do we start seeing the volatility start pushing back up? It's kind of bullish falling wedge, kind of interesting. Do we start seeing it push back up? And we broke this trend line right there. Could be back testing that trend line and turn back up. You don't have to back test a trend line. I'm just marking a trend line on the chart because I draw trend lines on charts. But again, if we get back above that signal line and then we break this downward trend right here, uh, it's going to validate a reversal in the market. Like we got back above the signal line right here and we stayed above the signal line. Volatility rose sharply. Volatility spiked as the trend changed and it dropped into the negative region. S&P moved lower. Volatility remained higher up until we bottomed out. Two things I'm looking for is, is the trend going to change with a divergence between the S&P and the trend direction? Does it change the, does a divergence, divergence change the trend direction on the S&P 500 as it did in 2022? And then does volatility uh, start moving higher, breaking the trend line and breaking above the signal line here, confirming it? And again, it's confirmed sell-offs that we've had here the in the summer of 2023 here uh after the march peak we've had these sell-offs okay and we're here in early 2023 but it wasn't able to stay there drop back below the signal line it gets above the signal line and stays there and the trend direction changes by going into the negative region then again you'll have confirmation of a reversal it will not mark the top it will confirm a peak it will confirm a top once a reversal begins so just something i'm going to be paying attention to the last time over here we went negative and we got back above the signal line and stayed there p started dropping and confirmed the 2022 high a week after it happened let me just be more clear that uh, that uh, the trend changed the week after the top the week after the top the trend changed and the week after that uh we saw volatility validate that so again two three weeks following week the peak or the week after that we could see confirmation here so something i'm paying attention to again will the uh, trend direction change by going into the negative region completing this diversions will volatility spike up and again, eventually get above the signal line and, and break the downtrend. The monthly trend line, we start a reversal. These signals, volatility, and the trend direction will eventually validate a reversal. I'll have confirmation when it happens. Versions is, and I told you after the October peak, we could still turn back up on the RSI, move towards 6,000. I talked about turning back up right here i talked about the same thing being a divergence in the most recent price action if we move towards the uh the trend line which i had uh, uh again talked about uh that we moved above we moved above this trend line uh and we slammed up uh, previously into the october low when we reached this level we had a divergence that gave us a sell off back to the 10 week moving average i talked about moving back up to the uh, that trend line or overthrowing it and if we did, again, now we have a parallel boundary, including the shadow over here, which again has formed another divergence here with the uh, NAAIM exposure index. This is what active money managers are doing. They're all in getting a divergence uh, here, very similar to what we had over here uh, at the arch peak, but a larger divergence uh, developing here uh, with uh, the peaks, uh, very similar to what we had back over the 2022 top and again the extremes or divergence is at extremes uh tend to mark some bottoms over here the bottom at, at an extreme the divergence here at a top uh, another divergence reference point right here at the uh, july peak another divergence at the october peak a pullback to the 10 month uh, 10 week moving average and now a divergence here again this is likely going to play out we'll probably tag the trend line and if we do tag this upper channel line you're going to be looking at slamming into that monthly trend line 
back nearly 100 years. So again, that low 6,000 area that I've been talking about, low to mid 6,000 area. At great length of detail in my last update. But uh, again, the um, AAIM exposure index is forming another divergence right here now uh, in November. And uh, that could complete very soon, tagging this upper channel line and the upper channel line in the long term monthly time frame. S&P weekly chart has diversions all over it. Last one gave us a July sell off here. And again, it rolled over here with momentum yet. But again, divergences tend to mark the turning points over here at the top, over here at the bottom. And now we have a triple negative divergence. Triple negative divergence is a stronger divergence. Triple negative divergence is triple negative divergence, the strongest reversal signals in technical analysis. It will likely lead to a top and a reversal and a correction. Same thing here, getting uh, another reference point of a divergence, multiple, triple uh, divergence, and then a divergence in the most recent price action as well with the October peak there. Very interesting. Again, going to be watching this upper boundary of the channel, going to be watching the channel in the monthly time frame, and we're likely going to reach both of those levels next week. Watch my last video, as I said, see what I'm looking for on the 60-minute chart. A couple of things going on with the VIX. The VIX gapped lower with the results of the presidential election. Down to the 200, I talked about that. I told you if we drop below the 50, we can move down to below the band here and to the 200, try to rally up to the trend line. I talked about coming back up and trying to back test those trend lines that broke up the rising wedge. And if we do, we can move to a new high. That's now happened as we bounced off the 50 off of the S&P. We dropped back below the 50 here on the VIX. Still have the 50 above the 200. This is very problematic for a bullish case. We're also having the Bollinger Bands tighten up here, suggesting something is getting ready to happen. They did over here, and we got that volatility uh, from the July peak. And I want to remind you, we didn't reach the target on the monthly chart yet, but we're just directly below it. We did reach 6,000. It's just above 6,000. We haven't tagged it yet. We may, or we may overthrow it and move towards 6,100. There's a very good chance uh, we could turn off of that trend line in the monthly time frame if the divergences begin to play out in the weekly and the monthly time frame. Look at this 50. The green line is above the 200. I want to show you what has happened in the past. We've gotten that bullish cross here on the VIX. Now, even though we've dropped back below the 50 and the 200, the 50 is still above the 200 period moving average. The volatility with the uh, July sell-off over the summer that got that 50 above the 200 with that increase in volatility. Below or above, I have the S&P 500 daily chart. Below, I have the VIX with just the 50 and the 200 showing. The 200 is in black, the 50 is in green, and it's the crossovers. Remove the price so you could just see the crossovers. And again, when you get the back over here in 2007, uh, moving into the bear market, uh, we had a little bit of volatility ahead of it there, uh, giving us a downturn. And then when we moved into the bear market, we got it. We had a counter trend, and then it resumed through the decline. New bull market with the 2010 flash crash sell-off. We had a cross, a bullish cross of the 50 getting back above the 200. T dropped back below it, the advance resumed. 2011, we dropped 20%. We had that bullish cross. Okay, it was present sideways for a little while, but then we saw the sell off in 2011. Uh, the next major one here was, uh, well, we had one in 2015 and 16, on a 17% drop, and then we went rally back up to test the highs and then we dropped again another 17 percent or so uh had it over here in 2018 with the two sell-offs in 2018 had it again here with the pandemic got above the 50 got above the 200 we had the pandemic crash three and a half weeks got back below it we had the big rebound back up notice the cross uh, back below the 200 and we had the rally back up and we stayed below it until we got back above it again uh, and then that marked the uh, the 2022 top, and we had the big 27.5% uh, sell-off. So the previous sell-offs, 27.5%, 35%, 17%, tw uh, pardon me, 20% in 2018, and I think it was there in the teens, that first sell-off in 2018, 
uh, here again 17% in 2015 is 16 20% and then the flash crash again each one of these crossovers turning back up led to a significant sell-off and now what do we have again we're making new all-time highs on the S&P but you've had the 50 get back above the 200 this is a huge red flag because we're not selling off yet so this means in all likelihood the sell-offs about to happen the warning sign we saw the VIX drop back gap back down to the 200 and the lower band likely eventually go back to fill that gap and this 50 will probably stay above the 200 and we'll see the volatility happen could that be off of the trend line in the monthly time frame and then starting to reverse sharply off of it very possible so again this is just saying hey okay we're making new all-time highs but we've got this warning sign right here going on this is very problematic for a bullish case going forward based on history 50 still above the 200 period moving average on the daily chart of the S on the uh, VIX the volatility index we'll see if that 50 stays above the 200 with our gap back down will the VIX the not too distant future sharply rise back up and fill that gap and again uh, we're below the 50 period moving average you can have the rally you get back above the 50 period moving average then bad things start happening on the S&P 500 Spikes in volatility led to the July sell-off, the August sell-off to September low, sideways triangle cor correction, and then our most recent correction back to the 50 period moving average. Start getting soaring above the 50 and staying above it. If the 50 can stay above the 200, uh, we could see a major reversal, but it has the spikes in volatility. Uh, back towards the uh, 200 and then bouncing off the 200 bouncing off the 200 here bouncing off the 50 uh, the the pullbacks back to the 200 and here to the 50 have marked backs or corrective moves July peak so again we're going to be watching this gap closely and the gaps that we had surrounding uh, this week with the Fed and the presidential uh, election results it's celebrating reasons there are certainty certain certainty with the elections immediate results market likes certainty and street likes uh president trump's economic policy so we had this big monster rally talked about new all-time highs i talked about a rally before it happened off our 50 period moving average uh last weekend and on that monday and tuesday talked about that at great length and detail and it ended up playing out of VIX, the 50, the 200, and see if this leads to more volatility with this rally surrounding our monthly trend line, our weekly trend line with the negative divergences. Tops take their time forming. Could see it come to a conclusion as we're approaching my target level there in 57.50 and the high end of the target, that low to mid 6,000 area. I talked about in great length and detail in my last video and briefly in this one. Thing. I keep saying it over and over there could be fewer cuts than the market is anticipating the pace of the rate cuts can slow dramatically we're seeing again there's uh, expectations for another quarter uh, point cut there in a December uh, moment 53 percent chance it's going to remain the same and they're going to skip in January based on fund futures Another quarter point cut sometime between 2025 to June of 2025 going into the summer and then another cut between uh, July to the end of the year. And again, start seeing evidence of a banking crisis that could dramatically change of a severe recession, which again, it's all hopeful for these rate cuts and it gives us this bull market, but yet uh, start seeing uh, recession on the horizon which the recession indicators have already flashed it, it's coming six months away from when they flash give or take sometimes uh, you know three to six months maybe sometimes six to nine months somewhere in that window you can see the recession begin to show up show up in 2025 I believe at the December meeting we're gonna get the projections uh, going forward or the Fed funds rate we'll get uh, where policymakers see it going in 2025 so the next uh, December meeting is going to be important but the Fed meetings have often 
mark the turning points, which has been very, very interesting. And I've marked them here all on the S&P chart. This is the S&P and all the little arrows. This is where the Fed first began uh, their rate uh, hiking campaign. And then here marked in black. And then uh, here's where the Fed began to pause. Uh, September 20th of 2023 marked in red. These are the pauses. And then now uh, the Fed rate cuts marked here in blue. Meetings have called called and have been associated with tops, bottoms, and continuations of the trend. A good example, uh, right here, uh, bottom, continuation of the trend, top, top, continuation of the trend, bottom, bottom, continuation, continuation, top, top, uh, bottom, continuation of the trend, peak, continuation of the trend down, and here, our, our uh, initial uh, rate cut, September, a continuation of the trend higher get this new cut uh, of uh, 25 basis points this is not associated with a bottom so it's either continuation of the trend or it's going to mark a top one or the other okay the presidential uh, election results rally in the fed meeting we had this big winning streak this week this meeting that we had could be associated with the top especially since we're right near that monthly trend line directly overhead i'll be watching it closely we're just underneath it there on the S&P 500 and on the NASDAQ there in those monthly time frames and also below the trend lines on the weekly charts. So if we go up and tag those levels, uh, again, we could hit those monthly trend lines and we'll see what happens. So again, this Fed meeting be associated with a reversal? Very well could be. But you're in the year, the March peak was associated with the reversal. Uh, last year, the summer, the July peak was associated with a reversal. It fascinates me that the Fed meetings have called tops, bottoms, and continuations of the trend pretty interesting. Could this Fed meeting be associated with a reversal in November? 2021, the NASDAQ peaked. So did Bitcoin. They peaked in November. This is either a continuation of the trend, major resistance directly overhead with negative diversions all over the weekly chart, it's either a continuation of the trend or possibly it will mark a peak here, this Fed meeting here. And you can go a little higher and then get it. You do get a peak. Still reach the trend lines I'm talking about on the weekly and the monthly charts. Moment, the AD line, advancing and declining issues, is diverging with the S&P. We had the, uh, the, the Trump rally, election results, and then uh, we got the Fed... Uh, uh, we continued the rally, and uh, we have a winning streak, a four-day winning streak now with some gaps. We're just below that trend line in the monthly time frame. Uh, whether this changes or not, and it could change, listen to me carefully, it could change. But at the moment, there's a diversions. If my signals begin to turn bearish if we form a top and start to reverse. Again, this could change. I want to repeat that. At the moment, there is a divergence, and oftentimes... Uh, at tops and bottoms, there are divergences. So it's just something we're paying attention to. Again, it may, may get canceled out. You don't always diverge at tops and bottoms, but many times they do. It's just something we're paying attention to. To base a decision solely on this indicator, the AD line. But it's just uh, something I'm continuing to monitor. And there is a divergence present. Maybe it's not done yet. Maybe we still get a divergence, but it's not done yet, like with the Fear Greed Index. The things I'm paying attention to, we have a multiple point divergence developing on stocks above their 20 day moving average on the S&P 500. Uh, each of these peaks marked a short term peak. And again, we had those triangle corrections. One broke up, one broke down. Uh, the August sell off uh, back over here. Uh, again, the March peak here we corrected sideways here. We did not get a diversions. We got confirmation of a lower high. So again, it's multiple points of a divergence that will produce a reversal rather than a correction. Um, it's like what we had over here. Do we have something similar to that here? Well, you'll have to decide that. I'm just the Western Union boy. I'm just showing you some things that I'm looking at. Divergence now, again, market breadth indicators, they can change. Moment, we have a divergence, just like the AD line. Stocks above their 50-day moving average on the S&P. S&P is moving to new high. Stocks above their 50-day moving average is making another lower high. We got a divergence at the October peak here. Uh, now we're forming a triple divergence again. Market breadth indicators can change. 
versions may not be done yet they get canceled out but right now you've got it so again we'll be watching to see try to tag that long-term trend line do we reverse off of it if we do do we complete some uh, multiple point divergences on some of these market breadth indicators uh, the divergence over here marked the uh, March peak uh, the divergence with this peak right here marked again a multiple point divergence and that gave us the uh, July sell-off so again where these divergences are developing they may not be done yet so be aware divergences on market breadth indicators can sometimes be canceled out I'm going to be watching that resistance level in the monthly time frame very closely on the S&P 500. It's about their 50-day moving average on the S&P 500. This talks about their 200-day moving average on the S&P, kind of doing what it did back at the 2022 top. It had multiple points of diversions. It formed uh, several reference points of diversions as it marked short-term peaks, forming a, a larger one, a larger uh, divergence. With the peak here and the peak here similar to what we have right now um, again had a divergence here at the 2020 top but uh, again just something worth paying attention to again breadth indicators can change but right now again over time still under construction again we haven't reached the target level on the monthly chart but you have massive diversions just like you had a massive divergence here before the 2022 sell-off it's so above their 200-day moving average on the S&P 500. Total put-to-call ratio, okay? Equity put-to-call ratio, this is a total put-to-call ratio. Total put-to-call call ratio, S&P is moving higher here in the lower window. Uh, but yet we're seeing the 10-day moving average of the put-to-call ratio getting a higher low, very similar to what we had at the January 2022 top. Again, S&P moved higher, uh, the raw data I got a higher low the raw data got a higher low here and the 10 period moving average of uh, the data got a higher low and uh, again we had discrepancy because it's not moving to a new low s p moved to new high not moving to a new low s p is moving to a new high and even in the more recent price action we have a little a little uh, uh one here a discrepancy say rather than a divergence if i said that at the beginning i misspoke it it's a discrepancy and again s p is moving higher the moving average is not moving lower so again this larger one uh very very similar to over here and then one in, here in the more recent price action with the october peak on the s p 500 very interesting again it may not be done yet that i'm watching I think the S&P likely goes higher and tags that trend line in the monthly time frame. It goes a little higher forms of divergence on the 60-minute chart. You want to know what I'm talking about? The divergence on the 60-minute chart. Watch the video I made on Friday. I'll link that at the end of this video. An important video to be watching.